Friday, and uh, glad you guys took a little time out of your day to join us. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if I can help breaking up. It's usually I've got a real uh, powerful uh, connection here. It kind of depends on your connection too, so I don't know if we can help that. Uh, usually a wired connection will help a little better uh, rather than going over Wi-Fi. So uh, maybe try that next time. Looks like you're on a mobile device too. That's generally not the best, but uh, uh, so uh, uh, try to connect on a PC or your Apple is usually the best way to go on these webinars. I've tried several different ones. This is the best one so far. And so uh, we welcome you and we'll uh, if you have any questions about connectivity, we'll do that, deal with that later. Just send me an email at terry at revolutionglory.com and we'll, we'll try to help you out with the connectivity. And there's little minute little things that we can do to tweak your connection to make things better for you. So uh, hope we can do that later and help you out. So, you know, tonight I want to talk about uh, the ecclesia and uh, and I are the emerging ecclesia. And God is doing amazing things really intensely right now and raising us up as his sons to become legislative beings on the earth uh, to operate as, as a true church or true ecclesia uh, uh, in God's restoration of all things. He's restoring us to our, our place of authority where we rule and reign uh, as sons, where we operate at a whole different perspective uh, from the heavenly realm rather than from earth begging and pleading with God trying to get him to do something. Uh, he's given us the ability and the authority to rule and reign uh, on the earth. Uh, and so here God is in this, this, this huge transition, probably the greatest transition in all of church history. Uh, and he's, he's, he's really dealing with you and me to prepare us for what's to come and the amount of authority that we're going to carry as manifest sons. So, you know, recently I put a word, I don't know if you guys saw it on Facebook, some of you may have. Uh, 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 I started out saying things are about to get violent and uh, uh, there's a host of aggressively active militant angels being released from heaven right now and they're, they're using strong and extreme and sometimes very forceful methods to achieve God's purposes in you and me and on the earth as well. So uh, Justin Abraham speaks about forced change and uh, if you don't like change in this season you better get used to it because it's here and God may, uh, I don't want to be one where God has to force us to change through external circumstances. I want to be willing, I want to sacrifice myself and, and, and allow him to deal with anything that's not for this new era in the body of Christ. I want to lay down, I want to be a living sacrifice, lay down my agenda, my, my mindsets and my, my thoughts and ways. And You know, the Bible says his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. So uh, he's, he's on a whole different plane than a lot of us are right now. And he's causing us to come in to sink a greater uh, uh, way with him so that we can become uh, the sons that he's called us to be. I said in the, in the post, I said, some will experience shaking and forced change if they have been unwilling to change in the past. Being open to let things of the old and embrace change is a key. Learn to love change. Uh, some will be repositioned in a place of authority, both in the spirit and the natural realm. A lot of people are moving around right now. I'm hearing all over Facebook where friends are being moved, are moving in the uh, in the physical, uh, and we're being repositioned in the natural. But but first, what he wants us to do is being able to handle uh, uh, proper stewardship, proper authority, uh, where we won't blow things. You know. <laughs> So he's taking us through this process. It's pretty wild and crazy, and he's using real life circumstances to do it. So yeah, you guys can raise your hand. That's me. It's been happening with me, and uh, but everyone is going to begin to experience a shift, and 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 being shifted into place for his kingdom purpose. And so uh, amazing, amazing things are happening on the earth. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, 
the scripture that comes to mind is uh, that we should bear our cross uh, uh, daily. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus went to the cross and, and, and died for us. We need to go to the cross and die, die for him so that he may live through us. And, uh, you know, what I want to do is begin to share from, from this book, Christosoma from, let's see, Adonijah, back up a little bit. Christosoma, Adonijah, Ogbeniah, Dr. O. You guys, many of you have heard of him. Uh, this is his brand new book, Christosoma Means the Body of Christ. And uh, talks about the seven transmutational powers of the emergent ecclesia. So, you know, what I want to do is kind of go through a little bit of that. And, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, uh, a mind-blowing revelation. The seven transmutational powers he's talking about are us dealing with the seven churches and the problem they had. You know, we're the church. So, you know, I did, before this book came out, I did a webinar on the seven churches in Revelation uh, and how God is, is causing us to deal with each of the problem areas of each of those seven churches. And so, uh, and then he comes out to the, with this book dealing with the same thing. And I'm going, well, well, I'm hearing from God, maybe. And so uh, so I picked up the book, and, and I'm on uh, page 107 right now. And the first book, um, Ephesus, and dealing with some of those things. And God has given me dreams, you know. And, and uh, you know, it's all dealing with my heart to understand and to know where I am and where I stand. Last night. I had this dream that I was uh, on a football team. Uh, there's the book again. I was playing on a football team, but I was distracted by by uh, uh, people around me and worldly things that were going on. And all of a sudden, the rest of the team went away. I was over 25, so I was a running back that was going to be carrying the ball. And uh, I looked up the number 25, and the number meant grace upon grace. So I felt like I was out of place. I was looking for, for the rest of the team where I could join with them and, and, and uh, you know, we could play the ball game. And, but I couldn't find him. I looked all over and, and all of a sudden I tried to go back to the locker room. This was before the game was to start. And all of a sudden there was five or six buildings where there were just two in the, in the, in the past in the previous time I saw the buildings. And it was like, you know, I didn't know which one to go. I didn't know where to find my team. I, I felt out of place and I felt lost. How I many of you felt kind of that way in the natural? I kind of certainly have with the, with the move to Santa Monica. Where's my people? Where's my team? You know, and and uh, we all may have been feeling a little bit of that. I tend to be a prophetic dreamer, so maybe it applies to you as well. And so, but I just couldn't find the rest of the team. I know, you know, what God is doing in the kingdom age is, is team ministry, family ministry. But here I was, I was distracted by the worldly things and the people around me. Uh, and I, I just was out of place. And so, you know, it kind of grieved my spirit. And I was like, God, you know, where, where, how did I get off track? And, and, uh, and it wasn't necessary that I was off track, but it was what the, uh, what was in my heart that God was re revealing to me through the dream. He always reveals the matter of the heart in our dream because that's what God is most concerned about is our, the motives of the heart. So I was distracted by some of the worldly things going on around me, yet I was wanting to fit in. I was wanting to find my place in, in, in the team as the running back. And so, but the grace of God is there, the grace upon grace, five times five, Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace was there uh, that God's going to get me. So, you know, I just began to pray through that and uh, began to, uh, 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 this peace came upon me that God's going to get us where, where he wants us to, to, to be and to become who he wants us to become. It's almost like I was in a hurry to try to find where I fit in. And he just calmed me down and said, it's going to work. There's grace upon grace uh, to get where, where you're going to do. I'm doing things in your life. I'm doing things in your heart. I'm doing things in your mindsets that all are making a revolutionary change to be able to handle and uh, what God has called us to do. So prophetically, that could apply to you. I think maybe it does. I know it applies to me because I had a dream. So uh, really, really interesting. But let's talk a little bit about the book. 
Uh, let me write his name down here so you can know uh, Dr. A D O N I J A H O G B O N N A Y A Ogbanaya. He is A A C T E V eight. That's his activate is his website dot com. Activate dot com is his website and activate is his YouTube channel. So I'm blessed to be able to go to his church every week. He has a church in Venice Beach. So uh, 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 it's such an honor and a blessing to be able to go to his church every week when he's home. He travels extensively, but he was home last week. We had an amazing, amazing meeting. But let's talk a little bit about some of this, what he talks about in the book, uh, because we want to become that church, that ecclesia, excuse me, the ecclesia that he wants us to become. Uh, in Psalms, he talks about, I have come through the waters, I have come through the fire, but Yahweh has brought me to an expansive place. How many of you going through the waters uh, that maybe seems like flood waters, you can't swim, feel like maybe you're drowning, uh, you come through the fire of God, the purification fires, God is doing all that, maybe you're still in it, maybe you feel like you're at the end of it. I think it depends on how we embrace change. But Yahweh is going to bring us to an expansive place. So have faith. God is going to take us there. Jesus tells us, I will build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the heart and the power of the ecclesia in its full inheritance. He will build the ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So how many times has hell prevailed against the church and, and very... Easily, we could see that hell has won in many, many situations. But now God is, is preparing us to take our, our uh, ministry up, not as a slave or a servant, but as a son in the order of Melchizedek that knows how to rule and reign from the mountain of the Lord, from seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, uh, dictating to darkness, not allowing darkness to dictate to us. So it's a radical change in the way we've always operated. It's a back to ancient pathways of where we've always, he's always intended us to, to operate. Uh, we can be confident, he says, that the ecclesia is the power and the key of God in the world to which God's realm will flow down into creation. It is the ecclesia of heirs for whose manifestation all creation is waiting. Do you know that once a manifest sun shows up on the scene, creation will stop groaning and will begin to rejoice and will begin to participate with you because creation has to help us fulfill our destiny. And we want to begin to engage with creation. We want to begin to engage with the angelic realm. We want to begin to engage with the cloud of witnesses, the living creatures, the men in white linen, uh, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. We need to engage with everything he said we need to engage with. Um, but here, I think, is a key in, in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 10. He says, Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. That was Paul speaking. And so in, in 2 Corinthians, Always bearing about the body, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. That's what we really want. Uh, too much of us have been a, about, you know, the who's who, I think, and nothing wrong with them. I'm not down on them, I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm saying the, the objective and goal and vision of Jesus Christ was if you see me, you see the Father. He was a humble man. He, was, he came to manifest and demonstrate the power of his Father. And so that's where we need to become. Uh, 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 not looking for fame or fortune or, or recognition, but he laid down it all to become uh, uh, the manifestation of our God on the earth. Verse 11 says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So what he's doing, he's causing us to lay down our life. What does the scripture say? It says, if you struggle to save your life, you'll lose it. If you lose it for his sake, you'll find it. So I think that's 
what we need to begin to realize God wants us to do is to lose our life for his sake, then we'll begin to find it. If we're struggling, 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 find out, trying to find an answer, there's nothing really wrong with that, but we got to see the motive of our heart. Are we struggling to save our life, or are we just going to lose our life for his sake, and then we'll find it? I think the death process, in verse 12, so then death works within us, but life works, works in you. So my, my good friend Barkley, some of you guys know him, uh, maybe uh, Isabel has probably met him, but uh, he said, God doesn't want to hurt you, he wants to kill you. <laughs> and, and that has a lot of truth to it, you know. And we just need to, to uh, some of us just need to go through that death process. And we talked about uh, the dark night of the soul, some of the mystics, some the saints of the Catholic Church of old uh, talked about the dark night of the soul and the process they went, very uh, uh, secluded more or less, and practiced ascetic, ascetism uh, to some degree. I don't really endorse that, but uh, I do endorse the death process, what we talked about in these three scriptures, that, is that we can allow the manifestation of Jesus Christ to, to come forth out of us, not my great preaching word necessarily, not my great revelation or my dream or vision that I had or my great message, but it's am I the manifestation of Jesus Christ on earth? Jesus was the firstborn of many. He was the first son of many. So now God wants to release the manifest sons on the earth, and that includes the women. So there we we go. We're back. And so we need to begin to realize that we need to embrace the cross ourselves. And we need to allow God to do what he wants to do because without that, uh, we're still struggling in the flesh. We're still struggling from a worldly mindset to try to attain what God wants us to attain to. And we're struggling doing that. So back to the letters uh, to the seven churches in Revelation. They are the release of the transmutative power into the life of the ecclesia. He uses words some I have to look up in the dictionary, but, but I love that. Uh, uh, it's it's the, the ensign of the victorious, he says. Seven churches in the, ecclesia, uh, the revelation. Uh, we need to look at them and, and take time, you know, have time to break it all down for you as he did and we did on the last webinar. But uh, go into the seven churches and there's a, a revelation and allow God to breathe revelation. And, you know, what you really want to do is, is, you know, we've been pointing fingers at others and saying they need to do this, they need to correct that. We're almost, in essence, we're, we're partnering with the accuser of the brethren. Uh, and judgment against our brothers and sisters, but we need to look, remove, the, remove the log out of our own eye first before we can remove the bank out of, out of the others. And so uh, we need to become the victorious bride. We need to walk in. And uh, he says this is, this, this is what the church must be in every generation in order to receive its rightful inheritance from, from the Lord. The seven things that the Lord gives as inheritance for these churches are of vital importance for the future of the ecclesia. What does he say? And I believe uh, in the word that the scripture is true where Jesus is welcomed in the heavens or he's held in the heavens before the restoration of all things. Uh, that means all things are going to be restored. What does all mean? All means all. All the way back to Adam. So before Jesus returns, I believe that uh, that God is in process of restoring the church uh, back to. And he, how many of you read that? You know, to him who overcomes uh, will inherit these things. So we'll go through some of that. I just want to take some time as we go over the next few weeks and begin to talk more about uh, uh, what God is doing through us personally. And since we are the church, uh, we're not talking about a building. We're going to be talking about you and I and how God is, is uh, revolutionizing us uh, to become sons. Uh, these inheritance are in ascending uh, nature. Uh, they build on each other and their movement until the ecclesia as a whole or as an individual passes through 
uh, the primary ones, they may not rise to the others. And so if we start out with Ephesus, we have to deal with the problems with Ephesus, and it almost like opens up a gateway to the next one to deal with. And, uh, and I think it's pretty interesting how you can feel the progression you know, when you're when you're dying on the cross, you can feel the the impact that you, uh, you're making in the spirit realm to repentance and holiness and purity. We talked about holiness and purity are keys for the courtrooms of heaven in the last uh, COH webinar last Thursday. But uh, uh, so we're going to see about seven churches being primary. Uh, keys to our breakthrough and, and receiving our inheritance. Now, this is not a matter of quality of their inheritance. It's, it's a merely a process of sanctification that prepares one for a greater degree of responsibility within the prophetic flow of the kingdom of God. Now, I like that because we talked about it's, he's preparing us through sanctification for a greater degree of responsibility within the prophetic flow of the kingdom of God. Notice he didn't say to the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and teachers. He's, he's talking to you and me as an individual and as a corporate body uh, together. Individuals in the body and the ecclesia as a whole are going to have to overcome their ideolo ideologies, their materialistic ambitions. They're going to have to overcome themselves. That's the biggest one. We need to overcome ourselves. The fear, and the fear of offending the majority of sinners and believers as well, I'll just add that, uh, as well as political correctness in the churches in order to inherit the promise we find in the final book of the Bible. Only those who overcome by truly yielding to him, he says, will receive certain rewards of prophetic inheritance. Only those who overcome. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I want to be, uh, even though as difficult as it is, I want to be one of those that overcome and can walk in the fullness of what he's intended, my full prophetic inheritance, my full, what is written on my scrolls. I want to be able to, to walk in that. I want to be able to walk in 1 John 4, 17, in the fullness of that. 1 John 4, 17 is my favorite scripture. You've heard me say it over and over, as he is. So are we in this world. So I want to be uh, with a, uh, a people that are walking in, in the 100% fullness of that scripture. So what is it going to take to get there? It's going to take us walking through the, the problem areas in our hearts and our lives uh, that the seven churches in Revelation uh, had to, to uh, uh, be free from. Uh, so we want to ride the wave. He talks about kingdom manifestation. We want to ride the wave. We want, we want, it's almost like wave after wave of God's glory. We feel like we get, you know, maybe halfway processed through one thing and maybe God looks at it differently and then the next wave comes and it seems like it's never ending. And But there's going to be a point. I believe these angels, these militant angels are here to help us. They're here to assist us. They're here to walk with us. They're not militant in a negative, angry way. They're here to really partner with us and to, to bring us to the place where we're going to change. I believe this next few weeks, uh, six to seven weeks, are going to be really, really powerful uh, and strong, uh, 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 bring us to the place where we shift. So look, you know, uh, uh, look in the spirit realm. How is God... Uh, uh, dealing with me. Don't look at it as being the enemy. Most of it is not the enemy, so you're not going to be able to bind and loose this thing to go away. But it's God, you can't bind and loose him anyway. You never saw Jesus bind anybody in, in, in the word. He never said, I bind you. So, there's, you know, we talked about different revelation on those keys of the kingdom. And so, here we are in a new phase of, of, of ministry of God bring us into authority with responsibility to handle heaven being manifest on earth and and uh, you know we need to walk in holiness and purity be able to do what God has called us to do so he's preparing us uh, for for us to enter in to the power of his resurrection and I don't know about you but I want to walk down the streets I want to see the power of his resurrection uh, uh, 
glory uh, manifest through me where I don't have to say a word. I don't have to pray over anybody. I just show up on the scene and all of a sudden that resurrection glory, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they were going, you know, the witches and the warlocks and the satanic people are going, what is that? It's I see on you. I see a light on you. And I can't, I have to know what's, what's going on. I'm turning from my God to yours. Uh, so the seven churches are symbolic of this ecclesia with the power to transform, transmute, and transcend the world through the rise uh, of Christ. Any body of believers or individual who wills to have victory through Christ can do so through accessing what the Lord has promised. And so it's available for all of us. It's available for anybody. You know, if you look in, in Ephesians uh, 4.11, let me go there just a moment because I want I want to share with you just uh, I love the scripture that I learned from Justin Abraham that said it's time for us to live beyond the until in Ephesians four the, the traditional fivefold ministry uh, scriptures. And he, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, the next word is key. Until uh, we all, well, let me just back up. Let me just stop there for a moment. Until, to me, means something greater is about to come. So, Something greater moves. We're moving out of the fivefold. Not that they're going away, but we're moving into something greater. And here's what it is. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Uh, so to me, that means that we all understand who we are. We all know who we are. And to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. So, he wants us all to be little Christ. He wants us all to be Christ-like. He wants us all to be sons, walking in that authority, walking in that power. And the fact in John 17, he prayed for all believers. He said, that same glory that you gave me, Father, I give to them so that they may be one with you just as I am with you. And so here we are. We're, we're, we're in this amazing, amazing transition in our lives. And, you know, some of us are not getting it. You know, we're locked in the old church realms, the traditions of man that make power of God no effect. We're all of a sudden, we're, we're being squeezed almost into, into saying, you know, something's missing. I'm not getting what, you know, there, <clears throat> you know, uh, something greater is coming. I don't understand it. So that's why he sends us prophets and apostles. Uh, Constantine put the pastors in charge when God said the foundation of the church is built on the apostles and the prophets. So what are the, what are the prophets are saying? What are the apostles doing? A lot of my calling is apostolic and prophetic. Now I'm moving into sonship to begin to be a legislative being, to legislate heaven on earth. So, uh, you know, we're just in the very beginning phases of that. I'm beginning to understand how to do some of that, how to partner with heaven to actually create heaven on earth. And so uh, we're, we're moving in realms we never had before. So we've got to process these uh, problem areas in the, uh, in the seven churches in Revelation. Uh, Dr. O says, when the ecclesia fulfills the principles shown, to these seven churches, she then grasps the eternal promise that then allows her to rule in time. She becomes here in this temporal world the image of the eternal God. We are made in his likeness and image. We walk in a sphere of divine consciousness, of purity and power, of supernatural uh, power, and greater things than these shall, shall you do. We're going to step into the greater things. What are the very things in Jesus? Well, I don't think they're laid out in the Bible, but, but uh, you know, we're going to begin to step into doing greater things uh, than uh, uh, Jesus did. These historic seven churches also serve to symbolize and mirror our problems and our possibilities as we follow hard after the kingdom of God. The spiritual power that God gives to the ecclesia is derived from the fact that the power, the glory, the kingdom belong to him, not to us. 
His also is the victory, the triumph, the exaltation, the purity, the covenant, the holiness, the mercy, and the authority. So, you know, in my when I'm reading that, I'm looking at where have I inserted me, 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 and my power, my authority, my ministry, whatever. Um, is it of me or is it of the Lord? The Lord had me go through a series of questions the other day and asked me that very question. He said, what in your ministry is uh, of, of the Lord? What in your ministry is of me? Uh, and so me being me personally. And so I discovered some things that I needed to repent and renounce of in order that I can be uh, a greater, uh, come into a greater responsibility in the kingdom. Thank you, Joseph. We'll watch that uh, uh, five-fold letter. I respect uh, uh, Jonathan Welton very highly. And so uh, I'd like to see that on a, can you send me that on an email as well or on Facebook? I'd like to watch that at a later time and see what that's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, so. You know, the next thing he talks about is the gate of tears. And we're talking about the mystics of God, or I mentioned some of that, the dark night of the soul, which we're talking about. But this really becomes a gateway to death on the cross, that we pick up our cross and die daily. It really becomes a great gateway to, to greater things. Um, and so uh, talks about the alchemy of our soul. And, and in the ancient science of alchemy, alchemists took... Uh, base, worthless, raw material through a transmutational process to, pro to procure priceless substances uh, like gold. They took worthless uh, metals and made gold out of them. How did they do that? They went through the fire. They went through the uh, changing complete and total form, metamorphosis, like what God is doing with us right now. Uh, uh, so that serves as the alchemy of the soul is what's happening right now. And God is doing that uh, by the fire to produce a completely different being, a completely different uh, uh, creation. And this is pretty cool. I want to just go through this and, and some, maybe some of the remaining time we have. The seven transitional transmutations. <laughs> it talks about the calcination. Uh, John 3.16 talks about a deliberate surrender of our materiality and our ego to God working with the fire or the Holy Spirit. He's purifying me, that purifying fire that he's working with, with us. Uh, the next was, uh, uh, and he referenced the definition of that, the active process of heating a substance to a high temperature. Uh, you know, we've talked about and we're in that fire where it's turning the heat up 10 times hotter, uh, but below its boiling point in order to bring about a thermal decomposition. He's decomposing everything of the flesh and of the earth and of our past, our generational iniquities that caused us to be who we are. He's turned up the fire on that, and all of a sudden we're going through this purifying fire. Next is the dissolution. Uh, the act or process of causing a solid to become incorporated into a liquid so as to lose its individual form. Well, isn't that cool? Doesn't the liquid maybe sound like the Holy Spirit referenced in water? Uh, so he's dissolving this, this hard, rocky form uh, to cause us to be liquid, to move with the Holy Spirit uh, 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 like never before. And I remember, you know, so key was our time up at uh, uh, Grass Valley where we took a tour of the uh, Empire Mine. And the mine itself was uh, one of the highest producing gold mines in the, in the country. But what was unique about the mine, it was mining gold out of hard rock. And it was uh, over two or three miles deep. And, you know, out of that, God gave him a prophetic picture of, you know, we've been in this deep, dark, uh, cave-like, uh, uh, dark night of the soul uh, that God has been <coughs> dealing, excuse me, dealing with each and every one of us to break up those hard, crusty areas to dig for the gold. God is digging for gold. He's not digging for junk. He's digging for the gold in us 
to mine the gold out of us, to cause us to become pure uh, uh, likeness and image of Jesus Christ. And so uh, the next part is uh, uh, the separation, the act or state of a thing being detached or set apart, sanctified. Uh, you'll just have to get his book to go. I don't have time to really explain each one of these. The conjunction, the bringing together of two bodies so that one is completely absorbed into the other. Remember that it wasn't too long ago. He said to me, we're getting married. I've been through that process of marriage preparation like uh, Esther. And so uh, finally, you know, I feel like I'm married to him where everything's changing. The miracles are going uh, off the charts. And uh, the next process is uh, the sixth one is fermentation. Uh, an act or process of agitation in which a ferment, a microorganism, causes an organic substance to break down into simpler substance. Um, uh, so he's creating something, you know, I think simplicity is what he's really getting back to. And all it's like, sounds so difficult to us sometimes to have to do this, I have to do that. But really it's all springing forth out of me uh, to be uh, uh, intimate with the Father, uh, holiness and purity, and simple obedience to the Lord. So things are becoming more and more simple as we're, he's busting that hard rock to, to get out the gold. Uh, the next part is distillation. Excuse me, this is number six. Act or process of purifying a liquid for the use of heat until it vaporizes, then cooling and condensing the vapor in order to extract the essence of the substance. Extract the essence of the substance, an organic substance, to break down into simpler substances. So the agitation uh, is working for our good. The agitation is working on our emotions, our intellect, our social and cultural and and perspectives that we see, spirit, soul, and body, how we're going to uh, come into a uh, full uh, manifestation. Then the coagulation, the active process of precipitation of purified vapor from distillation into a solid that is comprised of the original substance essence. The active process of precipitation or purified vapor from distillation into a solid that is comprised of the original substance's essence, the essence of God, the essence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so all these processes are worked out through the seven churches in, in Revelation. And so uh, his command be what he's doing with us. He's walking us through this, this most difficult time of our life in order to create us into something just like him. You know, and I, I keep thinking that I've always shared, you know, in Psalm 82 and uh, uh, John 10, he says, ye are gods, ye, you are gods. And so that wasn't a rebuke. And, and that same character, that same quality, the same essence that, that he created, Jesus Christ, he wants us to walk in that. He wants us to be gods on the earth, his expressive image of Jesus Christ through us to the world and so that we're manifesting him not ourselves but we're manifesting Lord Jesus Christ if you see me you see the Father and so you know it's an amazing amazing process we didn't even really get into the first uh, Ephesus maybe we'll do that next week uh, but I had a little bit of while we have a little bit of more time maybe we'll stop and uh, Allow some comments, but let me see. You guys know Bell Twig? Bell Twig, B E L L E T W I G G, is a person Dr. O highly recommended. And she put this post out today and she's talking about uh, things we need to consider to step into the priesthood. Uh, and a lot of the priests are, are, are you know, were in error standing in judgment I thought her some of her things are really key for what God is doing doing inside of us to die to uh, so let me find some things here uh, Jesus 
cried out to the Father, uh, Lord, forgive me, when he was on the cross, even before he died on the cross, he was acting as a priest. He prayed, he healed, he taught, he lived as an example for us. After he rose from the grave, he continued his work as a priest on our behalf, and he blessed us with the life and the Holy Spirit and an invitation to follow him. Christ did not come to judge. He came to intercede and to bless. The temptation is, now here's where she gets into the meat of what she's talking about. There is a temptation to step into a position of authority in which we think we are acting as priest uh, kings, though we're actually acting as warrior kings. When we speak judgment, negative decrees, declarations against people or groups, but that is not a position of a priest. That's a position of a warrior. Uh, are there times of judgment? She said yes. But she says, I believe we're, we should be very careful stepping into that position. So releasing words of judgment uh, against others. Uh, be careful of what she says about doing those things. Evil, negative words. Uh, yeah, Portals of Zion. Thank you, Rain. This came off of her page. So Portals of Zion. If you go to that page, it's, it's, she's amazing. And uh, uh, if I am, she said, if I am determined to be a son of God and remain in him as he is in me, then I must lay aside, lay myself down as a sacrifice on the altar known as the tree of life. That tree is Christ himself. The junk that comes up into my awareness, awareness is the process. Uh, that I'm called to work within my own being in the system of justice that can only operate properly when it is governed and covered by Jesus Christ. This is proper judgment. Judgment is not external judgment or cursing others or groups. It's not even saying, God, you judge, God, you take care of this. No, it is our jobs as priests. My work as a priest is to find whatever that sin or error that I see in another person or group in myself and work my work is to fix that in me amen and then having experience and awareness of that other person that is dealing with i can forgive that person or group wholeheartedly without reservation she goes on and on you can go to portals of zion and find out that but you know i thought it was so key what god is doing is is he's wanting us to remove the the log out of our own eye first uh, and sometimes, even now, just zip it before we speak anything about anybody or any church, any uh, minister, any worldly person, and begin to just examine our heart uh, first. Everybody wants to go, you know what God told me? He said, just use the spirit of religion for, for an example. He said, if it's easy for you to spot a spirit of religion or a spirit of pride or any spirit in another person, that means that same spirit is operating in you. I go, oh my gosh, uh, I guess I need to do some soul searching. So anytime it's easy for you to recognize another evil spirit in somebody, that same spirit is probably operating within you. So it's time to examine ourselves. It's time to test ourselves, to find us ways that the Lord wants us to change, uh, change our current mindsets, not only our mindset, but the ways, our actions, uh, the motives of our heart, that we begin to come into the place where God has called us to be so we can rule and reign. This world needs to manifest on. This world needs us to appear and come on the scene. And I believe we need to do that. Uh, uh, now we need to step in by faith. But as God raises us up, as mature manifest sons, he's going to give us greater and greater responsibility. That's what his word says. Be faithful with the little. And so he's going to release to us more and more responsibility. What would really be uh, the height of that? I don't know. But I believe it's the, the fullness of that is as he is, so are we in this world. And so I believe it will affect the cosmos as well. And so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, be gone getting the whole uh, as many people as we can save the great final harvest we've got a lot of work to do to, to uh, transform transmute those people into manifest sons uh, that can uh, the creation is waiting for us. 
Ah, uh, that is right, Sarah. Always look at ourselves first. I'm learning that, you know. And I used to be one, and I'd point my finger and say, "Well, they've got this, they got that," and God uh, doesn't allow me to do that anymore, you know. And every once in a while, I slip up, and I realize real quickly that I caught myself. And really, what I'm doing, I'm speaking judgment against them. I'm speaking judgment because I'm part of the body. I'm speaking judgment against myself, so I don't want to do that. I want to be a blessing. I want to be uh, speaking life, you know, from the tree of life. So uh, let's stop there. And does anybody have any comments they'd like to make or questions? We can go there and maybe uh, Holy Spirit has something for us as well. <clears throat> but get the book, Crystal Summer. It's available on his website. I believe uh, some of the book. Uh, uh, I'm not sure Barn, uh, Barn, not Barnes and Noble. What's the other? Amazon, Amazon has it, I think. So you can get that. It's uh, an eye opener. <laughs> Ephesus means desirable, desired one. That's awesome. So he does. He desires us, you know, to come to him, to be purified, to be made whole. Yeah, it's time to take our mask off. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We've all had a mask on. Some some point in time. I'm the first one to repent and so uh, so it's a, it's a good good process. You know what I've, I've learned to do when you know just last night when I had that dream about me being the football player number 25 I said Lord just to, you know I, I want to sit under your, your, your throne. I want to sit under the judgment seat of Christ and allow you to examine my heart and find out where I need to change, find out where I need, uh, what motive of my heart I need to change and embrace, embrace that. And uh, instead of pointing, you know, I could, I could blame it on all the exterior circumstances that were going on around me in the dream, but that wouldn't have done any good at all. So it's always after the motive of our heart. So uh, we bless you. Let me just pray for a minute. If anybody has any comments. Father, we bless you. Thank you. We bless you and we thank you, Father, for tonight. And Father, each one that has come, Father, I declare, I see just a, a light of his glory enveloping each and every one of us. And that light will reveal, number one, it will reveal the, dark, uh, the darkness. It will reveal the, the areas that he wants uh, to, uh, to be changed motives of our hearts, the intense thoughts and intents of our of our, our flesh and the worldly ways we've been uh, uh, living under, even the old church ways that maybe we were taught in error, maybe uh, that uh, what we were doing was of an old uh, move of God, but it's time to move from glory to glory into a new level of glory. Father, we bless you and thank you. You are always moving us forward, always moving us, Father. Don't allow us to have our feet stuck in any dimension or any uh, doctrine, Father, but have us with a firm foundation of your word, but moving forward in everything that you're restoring on the earth. Father, we thank you for the redemptive process. We thank you, Father, for the restoration of all things and that you're going to use each and every one of us in our sphere of authority. And so, Father, we thank you for that. Help us walk in wisdom, Father. Help us walk in greater unity with you and, and uh, uh, engaging with the angels, engaging with these uh, militant angels, engaging with the cloud of witnesses, engaging, Father, with you, with the Son, Jesus Christ, and with Holy Spirit in a whole new, new dimension. Father, we're not alone. Father, we have... Uh, a host of angels with us. We have everything, all the resources that we ever need, Father, are readily available for us to use, Father, to build and advance your kingdom on earth. Thank you for the responsibility you've already released to us that we can speak and we can declare things and it shall be established. So, Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. And we bless each and every one here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, this will be recorded, and I'll put it on YouTube here soon. And, uh, shukabada baba.
So, amen. So, we'll just close right there. We're uh, almost right at an hour. So, thank you guys so much for joining tonight. And we'll see you Thursday, Courtrooms of Heaven. And uh, be blessed and highly favored, as I know you are. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.